Most of us have experienced the vicious cycle where we get stressed and then that causes health issues like digestive problems or constantly catching colds and flus and whatnot. And then those health issues stress us out more, which then causes more health issues and just ends up in a vicious cycle. Well, today I am sharing studies on how to break that cycle with a focus on the role of your gut because it plays a very important role in the cycle, whether or not you actually have any gut symptoms. Hey there, I'm Mish, and I am a full-time research scientist with my PhD, and by day I conduct and publish studies of my own, whereas by night I share the results of other people's studies here to help you reach your health, nutrition, fitness, and weight loss goals. And today I am focusing on stress because it is a very important player in all sorts of physical and mental health issues. And although I'll be focusing on the gut today, what I'll be talking about ends up applying to all sorts of things that can be affected or exacerbated by stress, including things like cancer and heart attacks and diabetes, and pretty much any chronic illness is going to be influenced by how stressed you are. So even if you are not experiencing overt gut symptoms, I think that what I'll be talking about today can end up being relevant for your health in general. Also, I have a past video on another vicious cycle between stress and health that is more focused on the role of vitamins. So if you're interested in that, Check it out after this video if you're interested. Put it up here. And first in this video, I will give you some background on what this vicious cycle is between stress and your gut. And then I will give you ways to target each part of the cycle to try to break out of it and solve it. So as you've probably seen all over, there's been a ton of research over the last couple of decades showing how important and ridiculously intertwined our gut microbiome is with the rest of our body including our brain and our brain health, as well as things like cravings and all sorts of bodily processes happening outside of our gut. So the bacteria that live in our intestines play a big role in all sorts of processes throughout our whole body. This has been very well established in humans now. And today I will be focusing on some more cutting edge results that are at the frontier of gut microbiome research. So these effects I'll be talking about are very strongly established in rodents and have been recently found in humans as well. So there's a good chance you haven't heard of a lot of this stuff before. And perhaps the best way to understand just how important the gut microbiome is to the rest of our body's ability to function is to look at what happens when there is no gut microbiome. We can't do this in humans ethically, but it's been found in rodents that when mice and rats are raised such that they are in a completely sterile environment, so they're born and raised in a sterile environment with no bacteria and they have no gut microbiome, they develop completely differently. So their brains actually are structurally different and they have more inflammation in their whole body and they have more brain inflammation and their immune systems aren't as effective at fighting off infections. And most importantly for this video, they are more reactive to stress. So if you put two mice in the same stressful situation and one mouse doesn't have a gut microbiome, that mouse will react a lot more strongly, both in terms of stress hormones and behavior and HPA axis activity to that stressor than the mouse that has a nice functioning gut microbiome. So what we can see is that gut microbiome is very important for our stress reactivity. And in addition to no gut microbiome, it's also been found in humans that having a messed up gut microbiome, also known as dysbiosis, from various things like poor diet or antibiotics or just genetic problems or food poisoning, can cause increased stress reactivity as well. So for example, it's been found that different profiles of bacteria in people's guts, so like the amounts and types of different bacteria they have, predicts their brain responses to stress. And it's also been found that when babies are given antibiotics, they end up having more emotional difficulties over the course of their life in the future. Even if they only got antibiotics when they were a baby, it affects their development of their stress reactivity system, it seems like. And it's thought that this is because the antibiotics are disrupting their gut microbiome. And it's also been found that giving people probiotics actually decreases their stress reactivity. So they get less stressed out by the same things than people who are not being given probiotics. And the main takeaway here is that these studies indicate that if your gut microbiome is not functioning optimally, you will get more stressed out or feel more stressed, have bigger stress reactions by the same things. And this can happen even if you are not aware of any gut issues, you can have a totally fine gastrointestinal system, as far as you're aware, you can have totally fine digestion, but you could still have dysbiosis that is causing you to be more stressed out. And now here's where the vicious cycle comes in. Being stressed is actually bad for your gut microbiome. So getting stressed out causes dysbiosis. For example, getting stressed has been shown to rapidly cause blooms, so really quick increased growth of bad bacteria in your gut, and also kills off good bacteria. 
So for example, a study found that as college students' stress increased over the course of the semester and around test time, they actually had less good bacteria in their gut. And the reason for this that researchers have identified is that stress causes inflammation, and that inflammation in your body causes dysbiosis, so causes bad bacteria to grow and good bacteria to die off. And then this effect causes yet another vicious cycle because stress causes increased gut permeability, which is often called leaky gut, where that increases your inflammation even more because your gut is releasing toxic bacteria byproducts as well as bacteria themselves into your bloodstream, thereby increasing inflammation in your whole body, which can cause all sorts of other health issues, which then is probably going to increase your stress even more. And as I just said, inflammation is also bad for your gut microbiome and can lead to dysbiosis. So we've got stress causing dysbiosis and stress causing leaky gut, and then stress causing inflammation, and then leaky gut also causes more inflammation, which is gonna also cause you more stress, and your microbiome being messed up is gonna make you more reactive to stress. So it's essentially just all the badness amplifying itself. So now that we've got the bad news out of the way, what is the good news? What can you do about it? I'm going to go over a series of things you can do to break out of this cycle, targeting various aspects of it. And I wanna remind you that all of this, well, most of this is pretty cutting edge stuff. So we don't have like big meta analyses of studies in humans on this yet. So take most of it with a grain of salt. And the first major category of things you can do is improving your gut microbiome. And the first thing you can do for that is prebiotics which is essentially food to feed friendly bacteria in your gut and increase the counts of good bacteria and decrease the counts of bad bacteria. And prebiotics are various specific forms of dietary fiber, so they are found in plant foods specifically, primarily in fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. There are too many different sources of prebiotics to list here, but if you are eating a diet that is high in very different kinds of fruits and vegetables and whole grains, then you are almost certainly taking in lots of prebiotics but you can always Google if you wanna find specific lists of things you might wanna focus on. So we know that prebiotics improve gut microbiome, but do they actually improve all these different parts of the vicious cycle? Well, lo and behold, it has been found that having more prebiotics in one's diet improves stress reactivity, as well as lowers inflammation and improves gut permeability. So you have less leaky gut if you're eating more prebiotics. And the next thing you can do is probably pretty obvious, Probiotics, things like kefir and yogurt and probiotic supplements are mostly what's been studied, but there's also some fermented foods like kimchi and sauerkraut that could help potentially. We don't really know as much about that. And the studies show that taking probiotics really does help break out of this vicious cycle because giving people probiotics reduces people's stress reactivity so they get less stressed out by the same things. It lowers inflammation and it improves gut permeability, so reduces leaky gut. And I'll put the main bacterial strains here on the screen that I keep seeing in all these studies that I see most often. And I wanted to find a supplement that had all of them in it and was lab tested to actually contain the bacteria and not have heavy metals and stuff in a way where I could actually access the lab report. And only one supplement actually met all those criteria of having all these strains and not having heavy metals and actually having the bacteria count they claim. And I'll link that one below. It's kind of funny that this is the only one that passed and you'll see why it's funny <laughs> if you see it. But I also want to just add the disclaimer that you should talk to your doctor before starting a probiotic, especially if you have any gastrointestinal issues, because they can have pretty powerful effects. There isn't too much research on probiotic side effects and whatnot yet, so be cautious if you decide to go the route of actual supplements. But you can definitely get good probiotic strains from kefir and yogurt, which also comes in cashew-based form and coconut-based form, and all sorts of options from dietary sources of probiotics. Another thing you can do to get out of this vicious cycle is improve your diet overall. So I'll throw up a quote from one of the reviews I am going over today on what types of foods are good versus bad. This was not at all a plant-based review. The authors have no lean that way at all. They were mostly focused on stress and mental health and microbiome, but this was their dietary recommendation. So in general, things like saturated fat, processed added sugars, and processed refined carbs are going to be bad for your microbiome because you're not providing them with fuel and you are increasing inflammation with that saturated fat. Whereas eating more unsaturated fats and fiber are going to be very helpful for your gut microbiome, especially the fiber. And the best way to do that is to eat unprocessed plant foods, which is also going to reduce your inflammation as has been found in studies. And we need more studies to figure out what exactly it does for stress reactivity. But we do know that eating more carbs and fiber improves gut permeability because the bacteria in your gut process those carbs and fiber into short chain fatty acids, which are used to maintain your gut barrier integrity. 
And for another thing you can do that might be obvious as a way to improve health in general, but it's kind of interesting that it specifically helps here is exercise because cardio, for example, has been shown to improve people's gut microbiome and improve their gut permeability. So reduce leaky gut. Although note, this is moderate casual amounts of exercise, not athlete level because athletes who train really hard actually tend to have increased gut permeability. So they have more gut problems because they're stressing their body out with how much they're exercising. So don't go crazy with exercise, but incorporating 30 minutes to an hour of moderate to vigorous intensity exercise a day could do wonders for your gut and therefore for breaking you out of this cycle. And of course, exercise also reduces stress and inflammation and improves health in general. And of course, the next major category of things you can do to break out of this cycle, which I'm sure you've considered is to reduce your stress. I'm not going to talk about this much, but just as some reminders, ways to reduce your stress include sleeping enough, exercising, like walking, getting outside, being in nature. You could try therapy or yoga or meditation or all of the above, and maybe reduce your caffeine intake if caffeine is contributing to your stress. You could also try some science supported dietary stress remedies, which I talk about in a very old video. If you're interested, check that out after this. So I hope you found these useful. I'd love to hear your experiences. If you find yourself in these cycles of stress and health issues, especially gut related health issues. And if you found any ways to get yourself out of that, like, I'd love to hear if you found that diet has helped you or anything like that. So let me know in the comments below. And if you find my videos helpful or interesting, please consider supporting me in making them either through the Patreon with a monthly donation where you can also do Q and A and whatnot, or the GoFundMe, which is for one-time donations. I really appreciate all of you supporting me and helping me continue making videos when things get very busy and stressful because things have been very busy and stressful lately. So that's why I missed the last two weeks. So thank you all for bearing with me and being patient as I work my way towards getting this video up. <laughs> if you like this video, please like it and share it so that other people can get this information and learn how to break out of this cycle. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell below so you can stay up to date on all this science. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.